Jolene Valenzuela. I am the executive director of the Clay Studio Missoula. And one word to describe the Missoula arts community is vibrant. Sienna, you want to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Sienna Solberg, and I am the director of Spark Arts Ignite Learning. And we partner with Missoula County Public Schools Arts Education Department to ensure that all K-8 students are getting equitable access to the arts. Um, one word would be, let's see, uh, identity. Michael, do you want to go next? Sure. <clears throat> I'm Michael McGill, the executive director of Missoula Children's Theater, Missoula Community Theater. And uh, one word I think uh, for me would be, it's hard to say just one word about this, by the way, but I think it's rich. And it, the reason I think it's rich is because it's so diverse. There's so many different arts approaches that are that are vibrant in Missoula, but it's very rich. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Kia, you want to go next? Sure. My name is Kia, and I'm the director of the ZAC. Um, I started, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, the one word I think for, um, that I would think is definitely, I think, abundant and diverse. <laughs> that was two, but <laughs> we'll let it go. Uh, Laura, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Laura Millen, uh, director of the Missoula Art Museum for 30 years. Um, and my word for the is exuberant. Thank you. Well, so this year has been um, such a hard year for so many people, but so, so much of the arts community uh, has pivoted and done such a great job. What is one thing that you were uh, forced to do in this past year that you plan to keep this year? Michael, do you want to start? Could you hear my question? Uh, I think so. It's a little so just, echoey there. Yeah, I was getting that too. So what would I keep basically if, uh, you know, going forward from what I learned this year? Is that correct? Um, yeah, something that you had, that you have, you were forced to do during the pandemic that maybe you'll keep moving forward. Sure. Well, I think that uh, for a lot of us, especially if we're in performing arts, uh, had to turn to streaming in order to do some of our programming. And uh, there's some great things about streaming. I, I think that there's some things that that um, probably lack the magic of live theater, for instance. But uh, one of the things I think is great about streaming is the grandparents in Virginia get to watch the show also. The, the families uh, can gather around their television and... Uh, and actually see something that they weren't able to see before. So we're definitely planning on keeping that as part of our, our programming. Yeah, you know, I got to, two of my friends' kids were in a play and we had a little outdoor uh, popcorn and movie on the wall for their play. It was really fun. It was great. And the, and the quality of the video was also great. It was, it was really clear and crisp and beautiful. So that was fun. That's great yeah. to hear. Yeah. Um, Sienna, do you want to talk about some of the stuff? I mean, obviously this year has been um, very, a very strange year for the schools and a lot of moving parts and pieces. So yeah, I'd love to hear something that maybe you're keeping moving forward. I don't hear Sienna. Is she muted? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> It always happens once uh, during Zoom. Um, so yeah, when when we first started um, trying to figure out how we were going to pivot programming, we knew that there would be a lot of shifts throughout the course of the school year. 
So one thing we really wanted to do is provide consistency, both for our students and for our teaching artists. And so we actually assigned two teaching artists to every K-8 MCPS school, which is different than our typical design and model. And um, that's something we'll be looking at into the future of how do we provide consistent, sustainable um, employment and opportunities for our teaching artists uh, if they want them. So that was, um, that just kind of, I guess, pushed us uh, to that point um, where we're looking at that further. And I also um, think social emotional learning is so important and always has been, but it's even more so now. And this has been embraced by the education community, um, I think more than it ever has before. And we can do a lot with the arts and social emotional. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Kia, do you want to go next? Um, the Zach has had quite a year. You were, you know, fairly open when all of this started, and you were just getting rolling with all your programs in your new facility. So, yeah, we that's true. Um, you know, I think one thing that we're going to keep that we've learned. And one thing I've thought of a lot that I've learned this year is just a bigger picture of what accessibility means. Um, so we've been doing live streams um, and we've been, you know, we we're kind of forced into doing live stream. We we're forced into doing um, like take home art kits and we even delivered art kits to families. Um, and just realizing that, you know, that actually, it just forced us into being more creative and, and reaching more people, you know, with live streams. We're all sick of live streams, right? We're anxious to go back to in-person performances, but if we can continue an aspect of that, we're reaching people who might be homebound and can't get out and can't participate. And if we, and we're excited to see more people out and about now and coming back in, but, you know, we're still doing curbside um, paint your own pottery. We're still allowing, you know, people to come and pick things up. And it's really, even without a pandemic, I think that we've learned through that how to be accessible in different ways to different people. And that's definitely something that we'll keep. That's great. That's great. Um, Shailene, I imagine you have a similar experience at the Clay Studio. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it was like a lot of that kind of go dovetailing off what he was saying about accessibility. Um, you know, clay is such a community-based tactile thing. And um, for us to all of a sudden not be able to have people come and experience clay at the clay studio, we had to be innovative in how to get it out there. And so we created family clay kits, classroom clay kits that um, like, you know, I'm sure Sienna is familiar with, like talk, working with our Spark instructors here um, and having, um, having those things available. And, um, you know, it brought up that question about continued accessibility. Like how do we reach beyond um, just our community that can come to the clay studio and have a experience in ceramics? And, um, you know, we plan to keep that going forward so we can be as accessible as we can be um, to people who can't come and experience things in person at the Clay Studio. So um, remaining adaptable and um, listening to the, I mean, it made us have to think on our feet and really find new ways to reach out, so. Yeah, and I, I'm curious both from Shailene and Kia, have you guys gotten new customers because of that, you think? Yeah, yeah, we've definitely had people like who we've not worked with before, like um, come and use those, um, take advantage of those opportunities. And so it's a really great way to like gain further reach in the community. Same. Yeah, great. Laura, but it was hard because, we, you know, we were kind of stunted and we had just opened and so getting the word out about our services was definitely <laughs> challenging, you know, when having to basically shut down four months after we opened. Yeah. Um, 
I, and I also imagine, um, you know, just how, how you convey information about new types of services or no ways of delivering service. There's always misunderstanding or you learn lessons and refine your message to the public. And yeah, I'm sure that was a struggle. Laura, um, do you have something that you sort of were forced into this year? Um, I know that you've well, had yeah, a, a virtual I, option. I <laughs> um, because, you know, for what we're definitely keeping and, and in fact, you know, investing in developing um, is digital engagement uh, because it, um, it was um, so interesting to be able to, to reach new audience. Um, and, you know, with our fifth grade program, which this year was the 35th year of it, um, and the first time it was all virtual, um, and, but it was just exciting. We were able to serve uh, 17 counties in Montana and two tribal communities Yay. and you know so it was just you know it was it was exhilarating you know all of a sudden our reach was so huge um and of course still serving missoula yes and delivering art supplies to both to schools and to families um because you know we're trying all of us trying to not only meet the needs of the school schools but homeschoolers and um private schools and so yeah, it was um, it was a challenge and really really re rewarding. Um, our pro our programming has also blossomed in similar ways. We had just last month a really spectacular you know online um, panel discussion with an indigenous artist from Alaska, and you know so there he was in his studio up in Sitka, and we could um, engage a curator who's worked with him um, down in Arkansas, and and then meet with our audience in Missoula. It was just, you know, pretty great. Yeah, I mean, even, so just so the audience knows, we had a little hiccup. I had too many people on this panel. And so at the last minute I had to call Kia and tell her to call Laura on a Zoom <laughs> so we could get everybody in. And I mean, a year ago, we none of us, we would have all been like, what? <laughs> How do we do this? Um, and here we all are and we're all able to hear each other. So that's great. Uh, my next, I mean, obviously there's some great things that we got to take away and I, the accessibility thing, like just feels fabulous to me in so many ways. And, um, but there were hard parts about this year and I'm just curious from you, what, what was the hardest part of the last year for your organizations? Um, if anybody wants to jump in, they can. Michael, you want to jump in? I know, I know that MCT's, um, services. Um, sure. Were cut significantly, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, you know, in uh, early March last year, we had 117 people on our payroll, and uh, uh, March 13th, um, we had to close down our community theater show of uh, Spitfire Grill and cancel the last show of the season, and, and start to bring in all those trucks that are scattered all over the country scattered all over the country and uh how many trucks do you have or how many 50 locations? 50 and you provide yeah. um, these services across the country and internationally right correct so people. you know of course that closed our 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 process down a lot um a lot of people don't know that MCT um, actually does most of its business with our touring project. It's probably 80 to 90% of what we do. But the money that comes in from that project is actually, most of that is spent in Missoula. So it's actually an economic uh, boon. But uh, what we ended up doing is we created some new projects. I mean, as all of us here have done. Uh, one of them was called Playdate Create which was kind of packaging what we do on the road and sending it out in a box and then giving them that that community instruction in how to put together a play uh, with those materials. And uh, that really stretched us. And that's something I plan on, on keeping as part of what we can do. Um, we had to pull back uh, heavily on, uh, on programming. Uh, we reached out to other things. We started making masks in the 
costume shop for Pintler Medical. And uh, a lot of it was was an effort to keep people working and to keep them um, engaged and to keep our company solvent. Because the machine that is MCT is depends on some remarkable people and uh, and we have to keep them with the program and and that's been the hardest part probably yeah i'm sure there's lots of hard, hard decisions um and i just think you know the arts community in particular just because so much of it is um you know really hands-on um, you know has been really impacted by this pandemic um, and the arts community relies so much on individuals to be part of their process so um Sienna, do you want to share something hard about your year this year? Sure. Um, well, we had to pivot um, to reach students through art kits, through um, some pre-recorded videos, through Zoom. Um, and I think what was interesting, I've had conversations with teaching artists, and <clears throat> their, their biggest challenge, it seemed like, was that the lack of immediate feedback from students and from teachers so that they, I mean, they're so talented that they quickly pivot their lesson um, based on the, the feedback that they're receiving from students. And so to not have that was challenging this year to just kind of put out materials um, in hopes that uh, students would really uh, take that on. We have started doing some more Zoom sessions and more um, outdoor in-person residencies, and that's been awesome um, and just so uplifting. Um, and I think also, you know, there's there's a financial hit, right, for everyone um, and nonprofits and the arts community and although we didn't necessarily feel it too much this year because of COVID relief funding, I have a feeling that we're gonna feel it um, in years to come, especially next year. Uh, so that's something that uh, we're really trying to navigate and be strategic on, so. Yeah, I think that's a really important message just in general for Missoula Gives right now is like, there was some federal dollars that supported a lot of the nonprofit community in the last year, but some of those things are going away. And as we reemerge, we're not instantaneously back to normal life with normal revenues coming in for these organizations. So it's really important that, you know, if we want to support the things that make our community so special that we make investments and um, step up in this time. So I just, that was a great, really great um, point. Um, Laura, do you want to go next? What was something really hard at the art museum? Well, it, nobody came. <laughs> <laughs> it was really lonely and the art was really lonely. Um, and uh, no, I think that, you know, I think we're, we all kind of just facing change and facing threats. You know, it was a year of constant change and challenge. Um, and, you know, I think the struggle was to find opportunity through that. Um, and, uh, but it's, um, it, it really is, you know, an empty museum is a sad thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I imagine um, we're, you know, we're broadcasting live from the library and um, I talked with Honora this morning, the library director, and she said, our staff yeah. is starving for people. <laughs> And it's so exciting right. to have people in the library, even though like it's a limited amount and a limited time, they are just, they're ready, they're ready to have that um, feedback for the work that they invest in. And, um, you know. That has been the most people. prolonged grand opening in the history of Missoula. <laughs> yeah, for one of maybe the most iconic buildings or places in Missoula. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, Kia, do you want to talk about, um, something hard at the Zach. Definitely something that was really hard for me is just the planning aspect and facing so many unknowns. Um, it was kind of, it's been kind of a year long panic attack of like, how do you even, 
you know, how do we, you know, we don't know what next month is going to look like. So how do we plan for next month? We don't know. I have to create a budget for a year in which none of our programs are going to look anything like they've ever looked before. And so how do I create that budget? How do I make sure that we can support our staff? How do I make sure we can still support the arts community, you know, that we want to support? And I mean, just really having no, um, idea you know just navigating all of these unknowns and i mean i remember meeting with many of the these guys you know at different times and just being like what um yeah what do we even where do we even begin you know um we the very first thing that happened i mean our major fundraiser of the year was scheduled last year on at the end of march and we had already sold tickets we had everything planned and we had to cancel it and pivot it in about three days, put the whole thing online. I actually remember I went home and uh, learned Zoom. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go home and for three hours and really concentrate and learn how to use Zoom. I had no idea what Zoom even was. And like, you know, thinking back on that, um, yeah, it was just, it just seemed like every, around every corner, we had to teach ourselves something new. And also just that, unknown of like will we survive this and like sienna said we we did manage to survive but i feel like there's still a lot of that kind of unknown as we're going back because we really don't know exactly what that's going to look like and it will be it will be a long road for not only arts organizations but also um artists and performers in missoula yeah, yeah. um i well so just so you all know Kia was my inspiration for doing Missoula Gives Online. I remember calling her and being like, well, how did the mini art show go? What did you do? Zoom? What's the Zoom thing? And, um, and, and when she said it was like a success and um, I was like, well, we're doing Missoula Gives Live. We're, we're live streaming. <laughs> and so um, hence the live stream was born. So I do, I totally remember those conversations, Kia. And it feels like we've come so far. Um, who have I not? Shailene, I don't think I've asked you. Yeah, uh, um, it really, again, is the unpredictability thing. Um, and not having answers, not having all the answers. Um, yeah. Like the Clay Studio of Missoula, like we've just been growing gradually over the years and our programming and what we, like we've been able to plan out things really well <laughs> and then all of a sudden have this curveball thrown where you just didn't know it was like okay when are classes when do you start classes um how many people can be in a class i mean we're still up i mean we're offering in person classes with a lot of modifications and um reduced capacity um and it's been great to do that but we don't know to offer something but we don't know how long we're going to be um, operating at reduced capacity so those impacts down the road um, will be definitely felt um, because of that. Um, and just like having to, like, you know, not, not having answers for people, um, which of course, because we were all in the same boat, people got, I mean, a lot of times it's human nature to be like, I want answers to something right now, right? Um, right. And if the past year has taught us anything is to, you know, not expect <laughs> for answers to anything. So um, people have been pretty understanding about that. But still, it's it's in a it's a difficult place to be in, not to be able to have like sort of this sustainably slowly growing organization all of a sudden derailed, um, and having to come up with different solutions to things. I mean, one interesting thing as a maker, um, as an artist myself. Um, it's been really intriguing to see that the past year people have actually been still buying a lot of art, like our actual art sales at the Clay Studio Missoula, um, especially for our resident artist exhibitions were not impacted. Um, people actually came out and maybe because they weren't traveling or going out to eat and stuff like that, but um, people were still like, putting money um, into the arts in that way. So that was great to see that we could still, uh, that artists were getting, still getting support in, from, in the community from people purchasing their work. But yeah, um, so we'll see what this year brings. Um, 
I mean, things are, you know, definitely when things were shutting down, it was just like, oh my God, I have no idea what's going to happen. And um, I mean, we fared a lot better than what I could imagine we would have like, like a year ago, if you would have asked me, I wouldn't have had any idea we would have done as well through this year that because there were just so many unknowns, but, um, but yeah, we'll just keep do keep doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's interesting. Kia and Laura, have you seen similar, like with art purchases? Um, well, uh, we had a very successful auction. So yes, that's, that's the one time of the year we sell art and, um, and uh, it was it was terrific, um, bigger than ever. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I've seen. You know, we've we've stayed. We've had our um, gallery openings consistently throughout. I think there were just a couple we had to put completely online, but we have had, you know, smaller crowd kind of crowd management, smaller shows, and we have seen. Um, yeah, we have seen that. I don't think that we've seen a big hit in that. It's really the performers, you know, not having opportunities to play it yeah. where I've seen and, and to I, perform where I think it's really been detrimental. Yeah, I was gonna ask Michael maybe to speak a little bit on that because that's a very different, um, you know, it's not going in and purchasing and taking something home. It's like something you have to be there. And so what are your thoughts on that, Michael? Well, I feel like, you know, all of the event oriented things, this pandemic has been disastrous too. I mean, right now I'm staring down the summer going, um, what do those projects look like? They're just a remnant, you know, a remnant of, of what they were in the past. Um, looking at our, our overnight camps, for instance, in August, yeah. um, what's that CDC guideline going to be by then, you know, and how do you plan to go there? Socially, how are our parents comfortable with that? You know, exactly. It's a whole social like risk assessment. Yeah. And now that they're looking at, um, at 12 and older kids being able to be vaccinated, that might change things, but it's like everybody has said so far, um, it's such a moving target that it's hard to depend on on anything how do you make that budget i mean that's come up how, how do you how do you wrap your head around that we've turned to having three different scenarios <laughs> you know if it goes this way then mm, that's the one we're following if it goes the other way so uh it's it's a it's really tough for um i think event oriented things and i i feel for everybody that's dealing with that yeah me, t me too me too um, I'm, I'm glad you're all creatives and good at pivoting. <laughs> um, so I, um, I'm curious, like where you found joy and that can be in your work or maybe at home or maybe it's outdoors or, but I'm just curious where you guys have found joy this year. Um, Sienna, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I could never make it past like without tearing up. So. Um, when I talk to my teaching artists and about my teaching artists or spark, I should say sparks teaching artists, uh, they are phenomenal. And that's where I really found joy is they were so creative and coming up with um, different ways to reach students and interact with them. And they took what they normally do in person and totally pivoted and um, came up with some really beautiful, creative things. Um, we've had some whole school projects that have been phenomenal. The Clay Studio has been involved with some of those. Um, murals and, um, and art kits and pre-recorded videos that are really focused on social emotional. And it's been really fun to see uh, just them blossom in a different um, way or in in this type of uh, capacity. So um, that's where I found joy and motivation and being able to um, continue to employ uh, 
those teaching artists and artists in our community has just, um, I think that's our biggest win of, of this year. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Shailene, where have you found joy? Well, um, as far as like a couple of things, um, first, the, um, you know, the studio artist members and our resident artists that have been like just kind of rolled with the punches and like been innovative and creative and adaptable in um, making this place run during all of this. Um, they still come every day, they still have a positive attitude and just try to make things work and really are a community. And it's just so wonderful to see through all this that, um, you know, there's still that sense of community here and that desire to keep that community going. And so that's been very inspirational to be able to watch um, and experience through all this um, and having that sort of sense of teamwork. Um, me personally, <laughs> I never thought I could be outdoors in the winter so much. Um, and so I found joy and like sort of being adaptable in that way myself. Um, and, you know, getting out and like connecting with my community outside of work as well. Um, and, you know, still maintaining those important friendships. So. Yes, I did a lot. I did a lot of various, like even night hikes last last spring um, where it was like eight o'clock and I'm like you want to go on a hike <laughs> um, but just to escape the monotony of the house so I, I am certainly grateful for Missoula's outdoor space. Um, Kia where have you found joy? Well at the Zach you know one of the things that has brought me a lot of joy and I would echo what everyone else is saying with you know is people and sort of the appreciation I would say our staff and board, we are stronger and more solid than ever having gone through this year and figuring this out together. But also, um, you know, like the, the couple of things that came to mind is like when we did summer camps last summer, you know, we didn't know if we were gonna do them. We figured out how to do them socially distanced and still have them. And when the kids came in, they had all been home since March. They had not even been around other kids because we were all on quarantine and to watch them come in and we were all so nervous about will, will they keep their masks on will they this or that but watch them come in and reconnect with each other and being able to be in the space and being able to make art I really saw just like the power of what that means in a new way and the same with um, when we started the social distance sessions and bands would come in and get to play together in the showroom, even though they're playing to not an audience, but a camera, they hadn't been together and played in so long and just the sheer joy coming off of them um, to watch them perform and to watch them have those opportunities. And we also got to do, um, you know, we did Art Academy, which we which was a new program for us, which was all day, every day, a school, a, as an alternative for kids who were, you know, only going to school two days a week. So we had some kids that were coming to art school three and four days a week and just watching them transform. And some of them, when, when they um, brought, when they had, when they opened school back up to five days a week, we had a number of parents that were like, we actually just want to keep our kids <laughs> in art school. And just being able to see that, uh, you know, just that those, that, these little different things can happen and then they can kind of be a blessing to you and just really gaining that appreciation for what it feels like to, to be able to create art and make art and be together it means so much more now or we're so much more aware of it now, I think. Yeah, and just that idea of human connection and the importance of that I think is so relevant. Um, Laura, do you wanna go next? Where are sure. you going? Um, you know, I think, Similarly, ma'am, we've one of the things that we experienced right away was just a lot of um, new role playing and switching up what who was doing what and how how we were working as a team really changed and um, and was super um, kind of inspiring and I think that so we all stretched um, and we um, all became a much more supportive team. Um, staff and board and 
And I think also, you know, there, there's an informality to the way we work now. I mean, even even Zoom has a, has an interestingly interesting aspect in that you see people in their homes a lot of times, or in, and their dogs and their kids are in the background, um, or or working from wherever they work. Um, you're getting to know people in a different way, and um, so I think that informality is is kind of great, and that. In general, we developed a more supportive culture and definitely something we want to keep. Yeah, it's created a lot more connection and, and need for um, each other to be flexible and caring. And, you know, I think we've seen the empathy yep. this year, which isn't always present. So, Michael, um, where, where have you found joy in this last year? Either you know, it's or professionally. It's it's funny. Um, there's a couple of places, and, and one of them that strikes me right off the bat is when we didn't have children in the building, and then all of a sudden you hear children's voices again. Um, that was a lot of joy. Um, but on the other hand, I think the, the biggest thing is the outpouring of love and kindness from the community. Um, they gave so much back to us that made us feel like we were really important to Missoula and, and it made us feel like like persevering and, and pushing on and, and taking the next steps and and staying relevant. Um, it, it was in so many, a, a thousand different ways, a phone call, a letter, an email, a, a, a donation. Um, and there would always be the, we can't wait until you're, we're back in your theater or, or all of those comments just, just filled up the staff, I think, because we would share all of that, and uh, it it created joy, and that's that's uh, that's the heart of it. Yeah, I mean, Missoula is such. Um, I I think that um, there's so much support for the arts and so much generosity, and but I also think like during this time, it's really important to continue to support the arts and continue to invest so that these things that make Missoula so special and unique and um, provide so much um, opportunity for our children, for our you know, entertainment, um, for our connection to others, that we continue to support those and um, make that investment in our community and do it intentionally. So um, I, I appreciate that and I love um, how all of you like express the joy of people being back in the place and, and um, loving being in the services that you provide. So um, I'm going to, uh, we talked about sort of two questions. I'm going to kind of combine the two, but like one question is um, how are we different today? Um, and then what do you think um, reemerging looks like for you guys in the next year? Um, and I think, um, you know, as we um, rebuild, I mean, one of the things uh, with the arts community in Missoula is that we have this really vibrant, robust arts community. We have a lot of art organizations, um, but when you look at national rankings, we lack funding. Um, and so for the amount of art we have, we don't have a lot of art organizations. So that means that you're all re really creative and scrappy and, <laughs> Um, so I'm just wondering what um, like moving forward looks like for both individual or artists, but also for your organizations. And how do you think we can change that dynamic of um, continuing this like really vibrant, lovely thing that is so Missoula and at our heart and soul? But um, how can we, um, you know, collaborate or secure more funds or um, are there opportunities moving forward? Um, uh, Shailene, you want to go first? Sure. I mean, how we're different today. I mean, uh, one of the questions that's like, of course, we the term pivot and adaptability comes up a lot. Um, it's sort of like those terms you hear so many times, like droplets, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> like, like. But really, it's about being more adaptable. Um, and you know, as a as arts organizations and community-based organizations, like we do try to work together a lot, but um, if anything this year has taught us um, is 
just like that sense of needing to be more adaptable and re like being more innovative and reaching beyond our comfort zone of what we're used to, where we're used to reaching out. So um, I think just keeping that in mind and being open to innovative new ideas is something that um, we just have to keep going with um, in order to make it through because it can be easy to be like stuck in like, oh, this is the way we do things and um, that's, it works for us, but really like this year is tough. Like I said, if it's taught us anything, we just have to keep on our toes and be open to changing and growing all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. And Missoula, and Missoula is changing fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, yeah. it is. Yeah. And we have a artist residency program and, um, that's one thing we do offer. And it's been interesting having these conversations every year because we do bring in artists from um, all over the place who are coming and moving to Missoula and then having to find housing and stuff like that. And that becomes a little more challenging every year. Um, and so one of those things is like going forward is us having to find more solutions to that and providing more resources. So. Um, you know, it's the before everything kind of went cuckoo this past year, um, we did make this commitment to get more funding for those individuals so that like it didn't become that only certain people could come do a residency because it was unattainable um, and inaccessible to people because of the cost of being in Missoula. So yeah. we're still working towards that and um, plan to you know, help fund those individuals so that we can bring more artists into the community to grow this vibrant place even further. Yeah, um, that's great. Thank you. Um, Sienna? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think we're just a little bit stronger and more flexible. Um, I think you know, we have this new perspective. Um, and piggybacking off of what Kia said, I think, you know, the arts, <laughs> as we emerge out of this pandemic, the arts are going to rock our world. Like, we, people, um, artists, um, particularly performers, um, they have so much pent up energy and <laughs> need to create um, and be together um, and, and create together that I think there's just gonna be this beautiful emergence and this energy that is just gonna lift us and heal us um, and kind of, I hate the word ooze, but like ooze into our community of just like, creativity and um, and arts and vibrancy and um, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen um, and like Shailene said I'm so excited to continue to collaborate and partner with um, arts organizations and have in-person lunches and meetings and um, coffees uh, instead of zoom it will be it will be great, and I think we're we're close close to that. So, yeah, we I went to an outdoor event at the university the other day, and um, everybody was just like <laughs> so excited to be in the same in the same space with other people and not on a Zoom call. And there was a lot of energy, and I love the pictures that I saw when you talked about sort of like how how this is going to explode and ooze, <laughs> as you said. Um, with creativity. I, I think you're right. That's exciting to me. Um, Michael? I'm right. Well, um, right now, I, I feel like MCT is kind of a shadow of itself. Yeah. But what we've learned from this is that our mission is, is just as um, just as important as it always was, the development of life skills in children. Um, also, just building community in Missoula, which is what our community theater does so much of, um, that those things are really important to bring back and bring back stronger. But the other thing I would say is we've lived through a year that is a, a banner year for whatever reasons. 
both through our society's uh, changes and the pandemic and, and all the things that we've witnessed this year, I feel like we've learned something about ourselves. And, and it's art's job to bring those things forward. Um, to go ahead and incorporate what we've learned about ourselves and to start to um, to share that in our in our strengths. So that's what's exciting about reemergence to me. It's a uh, re-envisioning re-envi- and uh, and I think with with the community's help, we can do things that we've never done that are very important to bring forward. how important it is and how essential it is for them leading a joyful life in many ways. So, um, Kia. Yeah, I would, I mean, I would just agree with what everyone has said and kind of echo the thing that came into, popped into my mind was there's this like meme that I've seen before that says life without art is just meh. And it has like a, you know, a blank wall behind it and, you know, um, and I feel like we've learned that this year. We've all learned what it's like to go for a year without First Fridays, without going to concerts, without getting to see MCT plays. I mean, my son was in an MCT play that got canceled. And I mean, it just, we've all learned what it's like to go without all of that. And I think because we've seen that, we've all, hopefully gain a new appreciation for what those things mean, not just take it for granted. Like live, it's great that we were able to live stream some concerts, but you know what? Music and <laughs> performance is best enjoyed in the room with people's energies feeding off of each other. And so I hope that as we re-emerge, that we will find a new found appreciation in Missoula for what our arts and culture means to our community and we can find more support for artists and arts organizations. And I know that we still have at least a year, all of us, I think, before we are out of the gray area. There's, we're still facing a lot of unknowns. We're still looking at, can we plan this in the fall? Can we not? Can we, you know, so I think that it will be a slow and steady um, reemergence, but I hope that just that, that, that appreciation will um, will kind of carry us forward as we reopen. Yeah, thanks. Um, Laura? Well, um, yeah, like everyone, I think we, um, I, how, I think we're, we're humble and um, we're feeling a lot of gratitude um, to, to be surviving what we've been through. Um, and, uh, you know, like Kia said, take, taking nothing for granted, um, not taking the arts for granted in these rich, lovely um, aspects of our community. Um, as we emerge, I think we need to kind of embrace us, you know, simplicity. Um, and really, at MAM, we're really um, focused on the needs of audience and our community. Um, and, and also, as Michael said, meeting the challenges of the moment. Um, nationally, um, we all, you know, we're all working to address racial injustice, um, and, you know, own our colonialist history, um, embracing change, um, equity, inclusion, um, these are big, steep mountains to climb and we're working on. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I think one last thing too is that I think, and I somebody else I think kind of echoed on this, but I wanted to echo on it too is that I we've learned I think to reach out to each other more this year too with our, as arts organizations, and I hope that we can continue to do that um, and be a unified, you know, a unified front. I think that going through something like this together has brought us, you know, closer together, and I hope that we can continue down that path. I so agree with that. Well, we have a few minutes left. We're almost at 700,000. Oh, the library's closing in five minutes. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Um, so 
I just, I'm curious, like if there's any, um, you know, last words that you want to talk about sort of give, I mean, in the, in the spirit of Missoula Gives, this is about community building and celebrating our community. And obviously arts and culture is a big part of that. I don't know if like you each want to say a little bit about um, the importance of giving to your organizations. Well, uh, it does appear start. there's a lot of giving going on. <laughs> it feels very exuberant and joyous. And um, I'm so feeling so grateful. Yeah, yeah thank Same you time. to everyone who's giving. Um, don't forget your arts organizations. I know that, you know, that it's really um, philanthropy. This type of philanthropy is really important to arts organizations because often a lot of the grants and different types of funding are not available to us as they are for other types of organizations. And so we really rely on uh, community support as arts organizations. So thank you. Yeah, Missoula Gives feels strong this year. It's wonderful. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be together. And um, I was saying to someone, it's like it's all the moving parts are so amazing. Like all all of you have been doing all this work and um, connect, and then you all connect with these our community, and it just it culminates in this really amazing kind of community spirit um, that really has an impact long term in our community. So, um, Michael. You know, I was thinking about this, and I, and I think arts organizations really are, are powered by community, and Missoula is a powerful community, and and that is in energy, but it's also in the support, and that's why Missoula gives is so important to, to arts organizations, and and we can only thank you over and over and over, for helping us, you know, exist. So, thank you, Missoula. Shailene? Yeah, and I'd like to reiterate that too, without community support, um, the Clay Studio Missoula wouldn't be what it is today. Um, we actually just had our major fundraiser, um, pretty much primarily all online um, again, um, <laughs> this like two weeks ago. Um, and so we were really grateful for the support from that. Um, for Missoula Gives, we decided to focus on um, scholarships for our youth and community projects. And so giving to that will give more free and accessible um, opportunities in clay to um, people who would otherwise not afford them. So we're really focusing on that through um, Missoula Gives. And Missoula Gives sort of gives us the chance to focus on a special project like um, that that benefits people in our community so we can get back to them and provide services. Yeah, um, that's great. I know uh, my kids have through flagship gotten to do some clay studio stuff and they always love going and um, always come home with some great creations. Yeah, and even the flagship program itself has looked so different this year, and it was great to be able to find ways to still serve the students that work with the flagship program and provide clay opportunities for them, even though they couldn't come here for what we call clay mania classes. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Sienna, what are what are you guys raising money for at Missoula Gives, and do you have any thoughts on just giving and um, the impact to Spark? Yeah, so um, thanks so much to all of the donors um, that have already given. We had a board challenge and we were able to meet that. We've had the most amount of donors and the most um, fundraising we've ever had through Missoula Gives this year. So thank you, thank you. Um, we are raising money for art supplies and art, arts materials for students. Um, like some of you all have already said, we found ways to continue to keep arts accessible and equitable is through art kits and art supplies um, this year. And so we've actually, um, I believe, have provided over 2,500 art kits um, to students and we're, we're aiming for another thousand. So that's what um, Missoula Gives is focused on this year. So um, thank you, thank you to the community. It feels so good to just be a part of the whole energy of Missoula Gives and nonprofits and um, be amongst 
these other arts organizations and I can't wait to go donate to you all um, and support each other as we move forward. So thanks so much. Yes, thank you. Laura, did I get you yet? Oh, you might be muted. Are you muted? Is Laura muted? Is Laura muted, you guys? No, okay. Laura, I can't hear you. I can't hear anyone. Maybe. I'm still connected to you. You are? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I hear. Can I, you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I lost. I lost. I maybe I lost you, and Laura was talking. Was could you guys hear Laura? No, actually, we couldn't hear what she was saying. Oh, okay. oh Laura, talk again. I think I, I'm in charge of Laura's mute, so oh. that was my fault. <laughs> Laura, hey, it's all good. I was just ex expressing a lot of gratitude. And, um, <laughs> how good it feels to be part of um, a nonprofit community in Missoula and receiving all the love we're receiving. Yeah. Well, thank you all. And I just, if, if anyone that's out listening to this panel or watching, um, if you go to missoulagives.org or bitterrootgives.org, you can um, go to the search bar. And if you go in sort of one step, you can search for arts and it will pull up all the organizations that are doing art um, work 